Ever since the very beginning, Quentin Tarantino was a master of the needle drop. The music cues in Tarantino's work have almost become an extension of the filmmaker himself. Very often times they have a soul of their own. The filmmaker once stated, One of the things I do when I'm writing a movie or when I have an idea for a film is I go through my record collection and just start playing songs, trying to find the personality of the movie, find the spirit of the movie. Whether it be the use of Stuck in the Middle with You from Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction's insanely cool dance set to You Never Can Tell, it is virtually impossible to listen to those two tracks and not imagine Michael Madsen torturing a police officer or John Travolta and Uma Thurman tearing up the motherfucking dance floor. In its simplest form, the needle drop is when a filmmaker decides to play a song that exists in the real world at a fundamental moment in his or her film. In recent years, this sort of thing has become a bit of a trope in Hollywood. You know, you look at Suicide Squad as a great example of how not to use the needle drop. A more recent example is 2019's Joker. Todd Phillips uses Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll Part 2 during the iconic staircase dance, despite it not really serving the character, story, or themes of the film. In that moment, the film's original score, which is excellent by the way, would have sufficed in a more powerful manner. For a great non-Tarantino example of this, you can look at Bad Times the El Royale, uh, specifically this scene right here. Tarantino's films are decorated with moments like this, and his latest effort, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, is of course no different. Just for reference, there are like three or four perfect needle drops in this film, and I just had to focus on one of them. I could probably talk about this movie for hours upon hours on end. And you know, while that would be fun and all, I don't think that's what you guys have signed up for. To make things easier for everyone, I want to take a look at one scene in particular. A scene that I believe features Tarantino's best needle drop yet, and a fundamental reminder and lesson for any budding filmmaker who longs to achieve the musical genius of one Tarantino. Of course, the scene in mention is the out of time sequence, which occurs at the beginning of the film's third act. Now for this scene to work, you really need to understand a few essential details. Number one, in real life, neither Rick Dalton nor Cliff Booth existed. They are made up characters existing in a realistic time period and scenario. Number two, you need to understand that Sharon Tate was indeed murdered by the Manson family for no reason at all. Tarantino up until this point has not changed history. He hasn't made Dalton a huge Hollywood star like Steve McQueen. Instead, he portrays him as a has-been, a failure. Up until this point in the film, while sure some creative license has occurred, most of the film is pretty accurate to what happened in Hollywood in 1969. For example, the Spawn film ranch was indeed the home of the Manson family. And on the night of Tate's horrible murder, she and her friends did actually have dinner at the El Coyote restaurant in West Hollywood. Tarantino wanted to be so accurate that he actually shot that scene in the exact same booth that Sharon and her acquaintances sat in on that night. However, it's actually during this scene that the movie becomes a fairy tale, or the closest thing Tarantino will ever make to one. When the song begins, we watch as Booth, Dalton, and his new Italian wife, Francesca, arrive in Los Angeles following a successful stint starring in Italian westerns. Immediately after this, we jump to Tate's house, where Sharon shows a friend of hers her unborn child's bedroom. The words out of time perfectly sound here, furthering the audience's suspicion and fear. To make the scene even more uncomfortable and devastating, her friend remarks, <laughs> From here, Hollywood begins to rumble. The lights of various restaurants and movie theatres light up, and the lyrics burst onto the scene in a truly powerful manner. Tarantino uses our real-world knowledge against us, and for the next five minutes we forget that we are watching a fairy tale, and all we do is fear that we will witness a real-life horror. There's a sense of melancholy here as well, as it is that final reminder that after this night, Hollywood will never be the same again. 
Sharon, who we've spent time with, will sadly not be here for much longer. And Tarantino wants you to be aware of that. The needle drop of the Rolling Stones' rendition of Out of Time is so perfect for this sequence because it reminds you of reality. Sharon is out of time. Ruth and Dalton's working relationship is out of time. The old age of Hollywood is out of time. As Tarantino states, New Hollywood had won by 1967. Old Hollywood was over, even though they didn't know it yet. Unlike most needle drops, and specifically most needle drops in Tarantino films, the whole satisfaction of this specific song choice does not occur in the scene itself, but rather just after. When Tarantino rewrites history at the end of the film by having the Mansons attack Booth and Dalton and being absolutely brutalized in one of the most satisfying finales ever, we get a real sense of peace. Here Tarantino is showing you how it should have gone down. He's reminding you that after all, this is a fairy tale. The out of time needle drop now serves a greater purpose. The filmmaker is arguing that in the previous scene, reality was out of time, and that now Tarantino's interpretation of history has taken over. The film lets go of reality and presents something we would all rather live in instead. Jesus Christ, are you serious? Yeah, I'm fucking serious. Now my buddy and his dog killed two of them, and then, uh, oh well, shit, I, I torched the last one. Torched? When you watch Dalton being summoned up the long driveway of CeeLo Drive by an alive and well Sharon Tate, your heart breaks. When I watch that sequence every now and then, I tear up. For me, it is so emotional, so powerful, that I cannot help to think. Why the fuck could it not have happened like this? The song choice is not just great because it sounds good or makes narrative sense. It elevates and enhances the film's themes and ideology. It is because of the ramifications and emotion conveyed through the use of Out of Time that Tarantino cements his place as the master of the needle drop.